Hey, welcome back. It's good to be with you again, and we're going to start talking about Lewis structures, which are actually a way of representing outermost electrons. You might remember from previous screencasts or from doing some reading that that means outermost highest energy level S and P electrons. Lewis structures are used to help us figure out how atoms bond together. So let's get started here. We've got just the valence electrons. Sodium is a group 1A on the periodic table. So what does that exactly mean? Well, if you look at the structure of the periodic table, sodium's in the leftmost column, which is labeled as column 1A, and then we have column 2A, and then we jump over the transition metals over to the rest of the representative elements, and we actually have everything from 3A to the noble gases, which are 8 a. This Roman numeral right here actually shows the valence electrons, so in this case there would be eight valence electrons if we're talking about the noble gases. Well, we're talking about sodium in this case, so the way you draw a Lewis structure just representing the valence electrons is the first thing that happens is you have to imagine that the element symbol for sodium, Na, is inside of a box. Now the largest Roman numeral that we have is 8, so the most valence electrons we can have is 8. If a four-sided box eight dots that means two dots on every side so the Lewis structure for sodium actually looks something like that just imagine it outside the box so sodium's Lewis structure Na with a single dot if you were to look at something like aluminum which is in group 3A aluminum would have three dots and we put one on each side so carbon in group 4A would have four valence electrons four dots, one on each side of our box. When we get to something like nitrogen, nitrogen has five valence electrons, so we actually have five dots around the symbol for nitrogen, two of them paired, and three of them unpaired. So we're just showing the valence electrons here as we work through this. So how does this work for ionic compounds? Keep in mind what's happening in an ionic compound. The metal is transferring an electron, one or more electrons, to the non-metal. So when we look, for example, at the electron configuration for sodium, and we use the abbreviated form, the noble gas that comes before sodium is neon, and then the rest of our electron configuration is 3s1. Now in terms of ionic compounds, the metals are the losers. So since we have one valence electron, sodium tends to lose that. So we show that in a Lewis structure by writing the symbol for sodium with a positive 1 to indicate that it lost its one valence electron. Where did that one valence electron go? Well, in the case of this formula, NaCl, chlorine is a group 7 non-metal, so it has 7 of its own valence electrons plus the one from sodium, so we end up with 8. Since chlorine had 7 dots and took an extra 1, it has a negative 1 charge. Now the last thing we do for Lewis structures of ionic compounds is put the anion in brackets to show that all of those valence electrons now belong to the chloride anion. Sodium gave them away, so if we break the attraction between these two ions, sodium now will have a positive one charge and chloride will have a negative one. How is that different for something like MgBr2, magnesium bromide? Well, magnesium being a metal is going to lose all of its valence electrons. It tends to. So magnesium's in group 2A. It had two valence electrons and lost them both. So that means magnesium's a plus two. Where did those electrons go? Well, according to our formula, we have two bromines. So I'm going to put them on either side of the magnesium. Bromine is a group 7 nonmetal, so it had seven of its own valence electrons. So I'm going to put the seven dots around the bromine. Magnesium lost two, 
lo and behold, we have openings on each bromine for one of those electrons. So one electron goes to this bromine, and the other electron goes to this bromine, making them bromides. So these bromide anions now have a negative one charge, and the last thing we need are brackets around them to indicate that all of those valence electrons have been transferred to the bromine. So that's how you write Lewis structures for ionic compounds. Hopefully that's helpful. In a little bit, we'll take a look at how to write Lewis structures for covalent compounds.